We need to talk about Emiliano Martinez. All over social media, people cannot get enough of Martinez. Now, I've got an opinion about him, which I put out a few days ago, and people did not agree for the most part. I would say 30, 70 agreed with me. So 30 being a percentage that agreed with me, and 70 being, a, you know, a base just call me a piece of shit, basically. And, and I can't lie. So in today's video, I want to talk to you about a dying art of football. I want to give my side of why I am completely okay. If anything, I endorse Emiliano Martinez to an extent. Maybe the baby with Mbappe said in it, bit weird. Um, but on a pitch, as far as I'm concerned, Fair game. And of course, for a welcome video, this has been sponsored by the best replica football shirt sponsor on the market. Of course, 365 Kit Shirt, a sponsor of the channel for the last couple of months, which I get a lot of my shirts from. And here today, of course, they've sent us the current Brazil home shirt for the tournament, including also Neymar on the back with all official lettering and all the good stuff that you'd expect with a normal shirt for three times less the price. The real shirt costs about like 90 quid. These cost 24 quid. Plus also with my discount, VZH, you get 10% off. So in actuality, it's £21.60. I could do the math. So of course, go to the top link of the description to go to 365kitshirts.com. And of course, if you guys do spend more than £59, then you get one free football shirt as part of your order. And same thing, if you get £99 worth of shirts, then you get two free shirts added as well. So feel free, go down below, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. In the world of sport and in the world of football, we are losing more and more characters each year. It is really risky for corporations or for companies or for football teams, however you see fit, because this goes into any other sports that there is more of a PR, PC, safe sort of um, push when it comes to sport nowadays, which of course leads to, let's say in the football world, that you're getting less and less characters. Of course, if you go back to the 90s, there were many things wrong in the 90s, but the one thing that I think me and you can both agree is that the derbies back in the 90s felt a lot more. It felt like something so much bigger, and nowadays when you get a Liverpool versus Manchester United derby, if it's the players on the pitch, if it's the atmosphere in the stadium, if it's the cultures of both fan bases, it's nowhere near as fierce and nowhere near as, uh, dare I say, even entertaining as what it used to be. In the world of football, there is a word which me as a, a Burnley fan, of course, has been epitomised and, if anything, loved this word for many a year. And that is the word house. Can I say that? I don't think I can, so I may have to beep it. So, shit house. I'm just giving myself more work here. The word shit house is a term that people give to specific players or maybe to a, a specific play style, which means that you are there solely to annoy and frustrate your opponent. You are, in other terms, a pain in the ass. You know, that's another way to say it. You're frustrating, you're naggy, you're just in the way, and that is the best way to describe the word house. As a Burnley fan before Vincent Company in the Sean Dyche era, we were known for shit house football. Basically meaning that because we weren't as good technically in the pitch, we didn't really back ourselves to go at the team and try to outplay them based on purely football ability. We used other strengths of ourselves to get one above multiple teams. We've got wins at Old Trafford, wins at Anfield, wins at Emirates, wins at Stamford Bridge, and wins... Not at White Hart Lane, but we beat them at home anyway. And we even beat Man City once, if you ignore like, the 18 5 nils we had, but we tried. Now, of course, on paper, Burnley are nowhere near as good as Liverpool back in these days, and nowhere were they better on paper than Manchester United, even when they were quite trash back then. Even with this, we knew that we couldn't just outpass them at Old Trafford, so what we did is that we got in our defensive shape, because we may not be the fastest, we may not be the most technical, but we are definitely the strongest. So you may say, what has this got to do with Emilio Martinez? Well, that is house, the football place style, but there is a term as the shit house footballer, in which many footballers may come to your mind when you think of this type of player. You may think of Jamie Vardy, for me, the greatest shit house footballer I've ever seen. He puts his nuts on the line on a weekly basis, knowing that if his team does lose or he misses a big chance, he will get mocked in, in intensely. It would be incredible the mocking that he will receive by even when he's playing away from home, he still does it. And for me, Jimmy Vardy is the best example of house because 
even though it winds people up, especially the fans, he has the quality to back it. And most of the time, not all, it works in his favour. Another great house, Diego Costa, who, if you have him on your team, you adore him. He is the embodiment of doing anything, any needs necessary to get the three points, to get underneath your opponent's skin and to win the mental battle. Because in football, mentality is in my opinion, the most greatest trait that you can have. Because at football, at a pro elite level, the quality of the players on the pitch are already so high. Of course, there's others like an Mbappe, like a Messi, who is that step above. But for the most part, the rest of the 11 on pitch, there's not too much in terms of technical ability across them, unless you play against, you know, a League 2 team against a Premier League team, of course. The differences in both sides is tactically and mentally. And mentally, if you get underneath someone's head, they may start overthinking things. They may start getting angry and they may start rushing things. They may start going against tactics that they've been given because they want to prove someone wrong. And this is how we go to Emiliano Martinez that I believe that he is a dying breed that I feel like people should dare I say appreciate I, I want to say appreciate I feel like in football it's become so artificial and so like ready salted you know like ready salted and just hamudial you know what I mean now I just feel like I need more I need more characters in interviews and on the pitch and Martinez you may not agree with lots of things that he's done and I'm speaking mainly on the pitch during the World Cup, even the little World Cup thing that he put the, the, the best goalkeeper would on his penis, it's a penis joke, right? It's not the first time you heard it, and it won't be the last. I think it's funny, genuinely, it, uh, why not? You may say it's disrespectful, yes he's got like, world leaders in the background behind him, but f*** it, you've just won the World Cup, mate. You can do whatever you want, especially in the way that he's done it, because again, he is a house that backs himself so far imagine if they lost the final the ridicule that he will get because he also was like this before in the world cup and imagine just remember that 122nd minute save that for me is the greatest save of all football history the literal last dying 30 seconds of a match in the world cup final a man's through on goal and he has zero right to save that. That is not just a World Cup winning save, but also a, you may say if you're Team Messi, a legacy defining save. If that doesn't happen, he doesn't save it. They score, they win. Le Lionel Messi's legacy could be, I don't want to say the word tainted because I don't think it would have changed my mind. But in the eyes of Argentinians, which in reality is really the main important people. Yes, he may be from England or India or America, but in reality, the people's opinions that matter is his nations. And if he didn't win the World Cup, then he would always be seen as second to Diego because he's not the one that did it for his own nation in the biggest tournament, the only one that they actually care about. And if he didn't make that save, then Messi's legacy could be tainted in the eyes of the Argentinians. And then he saved it. He then went to the penalties, and this is where me and you may disagree. When Chuamini, Chuamani, Chuamini, I think it's Chuamini, I'm so sorry if I'm not French, I, I do apologise. When Chuamini was walking up to take his penalty, Martinez said something which people really didn't like. Classified as disrespectful, and I get it, right? As far as I'm aware, the ball was on the floor, and that he just simply picked up the ball that Chuamini was walking up to, to take the penalty, and he just lobbed it. He just lobbed it to his side, and... I don't think he got the ball himself, I think someone else got it for him. But that one thing, he would be laughed at, of course. But that didn't happen. He missed. He missed the penalty. He missed the penalty, completely missed the target. And the way that I see it, because mentally the sport is so important, I think that if he didn't do that, and True Mini would have scored that, and God knows what could have happened in the end of that shootout. In my opinion, in football, there's one thing to be respectful, and that's one thing that everyone would like to see, sportsmanship. But I understand in a World Cup final, you don't, you don't care about people's opinions. All you care about is your people and your country. And he did what it took to win the final. Now, of course, maybe if he didn't do that, he would miss anyway. And that's the beauty of history. We will never know. We will never know if he would have missed anyway. But he did. Martinez won his country the World Cup final. He is a hero to his people, and he put a trophy near his wiener, okay? Which I think, in my opinion, still is quite funny. But I will need to interject with this part because, again, my kind of baseline point is that I think we need more people like Martinez. 
because in sport, it's so boring for the most part. Most players are being told what to say in their interviews. They don't really say what they really think and they wait until they retire to then become a pundit to then really say what they think. But I must interject though, I don't really think having a baby with Mbappe standing it is, I wouldn't do that. But again, I gotta understand to the fact that to the Argentinian people, he is literally a hero. He can go to the center of, I can't pronounce this, I'm so sorry. Buenos Aires, Buenos Aires? He can go to the center of that city and he won't have to pay a penny. Not like he's already rich, but he literally, anything he wants, people will do. Now, of course, I do believe that karma is a powerful thing. And one day, Martinez, I do think, will be dealt karma. And even if that does happen, he still won't care because he did what he had to do. And in my opinion, and my kind of unpopular opinion, houses makes a sport great. It makes it unpredictable and it makes it entertaining because it could be seen as disrespectful, unsportsmanlike, but you know what, man? You need characters in football. You need a bit of variety in football in terms of players. And I like it. Okay, and I'm a f and I'm a and I'm a person, of course, a Burnley fan. So you may say, yeah, of course you think that you're a Burnley fan. Ashley Barnes is an awful footballer for the most part. Well, to a Premier League standard, but he stayed there for many years just because he just got stuck in. Mentality. Very important thing. So that's my thoughts on Martinez. Tell me yours down below in comments. I do think that it is a very important part of football. And with the way we're going nowadays, I would like to see this still be a thing. Okay, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.